Om Shanti. Welcome to the next normal in collaboration with America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Dr. Jenna, but you can call me Sister Jenna. And every Wednesday we meet to explore wisdom, laughter, love, life, issues that really are important to our health and well-being, but especially our emotional well-being. For almost the last 30 years, I've been on the path of my own spiritual awakening, and I am still learning so much, and I'm so happy about that. I guess it really suits you no benefit to actually think that you are spiritual or evolved. It might close the door. But what if you just kept your door open to keep learning and to keep evolving and understanding that there are various truths out there in the world for you to understand who you really are? More than anything else, we need to figure ourselves out, inside and out. My special guest, Dr. Ivan Figueroa Otero, is a friend and is a former academic pediatric surgeon who, after retiring from an active surgical practice, decided to look forward to new challenges based on his extensive experience in Oriental Eastern philosophies and training in Chinese-style medical acupuncture. He then began a very successful integrative holistic medical practice, which led him to be recognized as Holistic Physician of the Year in 2011, a very active TV presence in the field of alternative medicine. His goal is to help patients in their search for total balance and to achieve physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. Dr. Ivan then rounded out his goals by initiating a writing career in his favorite genre, non-sectarian spirituality and self-healing, which allowed him to publish the School of Life trilogy, Spirituality 101, Spirituality 1.2, Spirituality 103, and his most newest book, Spirituality 104, Reflections in My Magical Mirror, Lessons of Love from the School of Life, all of his published books have received significant acclaim. We're so happy to be welcoming our brother on the air. Dr. Ivan, welcome. So nice to see you again. Om Shanti, sister. Thank you for having me here. I'm joyful about this. Yeah, me too. Me too. Brings back a lot of memories, all of our times in Peace Village in New York, um, the times that we've been on air with America Meditating Radio, and even the wonderful time that you offered my mother when she wasn't doing so well in New York. You are truly a gift. So let's get right into it. You know, earlier on in your life, you faced a number of challenges. Uh, I mean, many of us have, I'm sure, but we all feel like our challenges are unique only to us. It's our invitation. But you doubted the meaning of life and rebelled against any God figure. What inspired you later to pursue a path of spirituality? And how were you able to overcome the life challenges that you had faced? Uh, sister, it, it's a matter of balance and learning. At a different stage of my life, when I was going through that phase, I did not understand some aspects of life itself. At that time in my youth, I thought I knew about everything there was to know. I keep telling my patients or young people, they know it all. And um, they make more mistakes because they don't know the consequences of their actions. So since they're not aware of what karma, what I call the love of love, I don't like the word karma too much, because there's always dharma. Karma becomes dharma when you open to the learning lesson. And, and at that time, I did not really understand the, what I was doing. That sounds like Jesus, we forgive them for they don't know what they do. And, uh, Life will turn you around and push you in the right direction, like um, like the good shepherd. If you have to pull your uh, sheep back into the uh, herd, you may have to hit it in the back with a little stick or put a dog behind the blessing behind uh, to go back in there. So it keeps us in tune, and our experience, our capabilities and our openness to keep learning will make me aware when the message is given to me to get back in place. In my life, it took me took me quite a long time because I was very stubborn. I thought I could handle most things by myself. And you know that. <laughs> and uh, so I would- It's a beautiful, uh, wait, hold a minute. Yes. You're a beautiful, stubborn man. I don't <laughs> think you're really that stubborn. It's that 
you're such a deep thinker, Dr. Ivan. It's like you are, you see the world from up here. And so you have permission to be stubborn, yeah? I, I, <laughs> I have to admit my humanity. My humanity can have a little bit of lapse. When I become connected, I'm a different person. When I see my patients, it's uh, none of that goes. It's a different person. I channel things, I become openness and there's no competition. Everything I do is part of the whole. So that's, that's what I'm, I'm trying to connect with you right now to be that way, be simple. And yes, I made mistakes. And those mistakes gave me the lessons I had to understand. And, and I did take advantage, but it was slowly. Every step was slower. I understood something new. Every part of my life has a meaning. I cannot go back and change my life. That is, I never heard anything so awkward and saying, oh, I want my life changed. I go to do something else. I can never say that now. Everything in my life, every experience, good or bad, had been part of my beautiful growth process. And when I remember those difficult times, I it's a different feeling. Back in the past, I would get angry. I would have tears in my eyes. Now I get a little feeling in my heart, which that's what you needed, friend. <laughs> and uh, it becomes a really joyful experience to remember those things. The only thing I hate a little bit was my teenager years. A dollar since I tell my patients, it's a difficult time. Those times are not easy. We're looking to be someone, to be understood as someone, yet the system wants you to be somebody else, right? <laughs> and when you go around, you're fighting yourself because the inner guy says, this is not the path, but the system will take you in a herd-like fashion towards something. And that's when you go into a lot of difficult times, sister. Yeah, yeah. And we all have as teenagers. It's not the most comfortable place to be because you're trying to find your identity. That's yes. when it really starts to get sparked. And some of us get close to figuring it out at 30, at 40, at 50, some of us at 60, and that's okay. It's our karmic contract, you know, and it's all significant if we accept the unfolding. So tell us, you know, what led to your transformation from pediatric surgery to spiritual self-help author? and the holistic medical practice. At that time, I was about 60 to 61 years old. I was, I had done everything I could in pediatric surgery. I, I was retired from academic medicine at that time. Then I started a new pediatric hospital, became chief of surgery there. And I was looking for something to do. I don't stick around watching, changing the channels around my, like my kids want me to do. Uh, so at that time, I, I had time to go forward, develop more of my pediatric surgery, grow my practice, but I was not happy. I was not balanced. I was exceeding myself in eating and social and joining, you know, good dining and good uh, wine. And I was really not flowing. I was just stepping through the mood like an automatic, but I was not happy. Thank God I have my beautiful wife, Yvette, to keep me on track and give me the hope to start waking up. And with her help, uh, I managed to, to say, you know, let's really what you want right now. Everything you've done is good and it's done you good, but there's something else that your inner heart says you should look for. And then I decided, thank God at that time, economic yeah, was stable. So I, have, so I decided to, boom, quit my job as a pediatric surgeon, leave the hospital again, and then look for something else. And what's something else? What am I gonna do? But I wanted to do something with people, with touch and feel them. And since I had trained in acupuncture quite well under several teachers of Chinese medicine, I thought the holistic nature of acupuncture was what, and I became a very strong Buddhist practitioner, a Tibetan Buddhist practitioner, I felt that that would be the path to go. Let me try, see if I can develop a practice in holistic medicine using acupuncture. And I started, but at that time I started like a little hobby. I didn't know it was gonna become a massive practice. And it was just a trial to keep myself busy 
and I keep telling Joe's at that time I was still we were very well known in the hospital. I didn't have patients. I didn't know I do everything by the book, you know, this new goes there, goes there. My intuition was still growing. And then I told the hospital staff that I would give Mackie Bunji for free. <laughs> and then my office really got full. And there's many jokes about that time when I started practicing with them. I was very successful. And uh, that allowed me to become confident and see many experiences of life-changing healing modes on patients, on nurses, and friends and physicians that I'd never seen before. I mean, there was like immediate changes in these persons. And I said, what's going on? Because acupuncture is great. But then I realized there was something in my connection, the energy connection, that was like amplifying the effect. You know, how could it be? I don't know too much about acupuncture. I don't know what I'm doing at this point for that. But then I realized, especially with one patient that was paralyzed because of a severe uh, dermatomyositis, which is a uh, muscle dystrophy disease. And he had developed, uh, he was in a chair wheelchair. He walked into my office. He was a former police uh, trooper Officer. on a motorcycle. Um, and he walks into my office and I ask him, gets me the diagnosis. I said, oh my God, I don't know anything about this. How do you treat it with acupuncture? I was just starting. I was an intern in this. And he says, you know, I came here because you're the guy you're going to heal me. Wow. And I looked at him and I said, what does this mean? Is he crazy? Was he saying something that it's an incurable disease? So he said that. And it was a marvelous experience. Because I started becoming more intuitive since that time when he said that. Then I realized, and I started talking to him, he had a problem, emotional problem with the lung. He had developed weakness in the lung. He had hurt himself. He was a happy go doer around with his wife, and his wife kicked him out of the home. And then he became very sad and very guilty. And all those things hurt his lung and the lungs and the, and the kidneys, he became very fearful. And then the whole thing developed into this condition they call dermatomyositis and wow. myositis, and he lost the atrophy of the lower legs. Wow. And as I talked to him, I said, well, let's give it a try. And uh, I started doing a combination of points, but they just came out which ones I had to use. And I uh, forget about what the tennis, I just went out and they started putting some points. At that time, I used some points that uh, called diamine. Diamine opens up the channels of the midpoint and opens up the above with the above. I say you have to balance them like virtually above with below. So this guy needed a balancing of above with below. So I used those points and I put them in there. And I had my assistant look at me. And when I put those points on his legs, which are atrophic, started shaking and vibrating like the convulsion, and I started sweating, and it got so scared, my my ego went downhill. I said, what's going on? There's something wrong. This guy, I don't know what to do. I just breathed down. I said, easy, let it go, and suddenly they were coming down. Then I realized when I talked to my teachers that I was energy flowing into obstructed channels. When energy is going to a certain channel, you get vibrations, shaking, right, right. and convulsions because the, the, you're trying to make your way through a certain river flow. But that's what happened there. And then I started working with the emotions. I talked to him, blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and four weeks later, this atrophic guy was playing basketball. Wow. What a great story. And he what came great home story. and he talked to me and he took them in. And he always, I kept on for about a year or two. Then he started sending me patients with similar conditions. But because this guy healed, went back to his wife, I talked him out. And then he went back to work in the office as a policeman. But he could walk. And it's a tropic... Fantastic uh, story, Dr. Ivan. Yeah, it, it's a beautiful. Great story. I, I have, uh, I have And you have many. Stories. You have many, many. stories I have many like stories. that. Many I would stories. say that, you know, when I look at your journey, uh, I like the fact that you are slightly unconventional in your medical practice because 
there are times that you go by the book, but the energy of karma that we're carrying as souls doesn't necessarily no. sort of make it very clear why certain illnesses That's or right. certain that physical right. conditions exist. In my last, in my book, Healing the Cancer and Our Genes, I go deeply into that. Uh, yes, yes. The problem is the karmic process guides the healing process. That's why we have to have all sorts of medical types. Yes, we have I to agree. have modern medicine. We have to have intermediate, we have chiropractic. Got to, all those healing medicines have to be part of the process and they fit into the right goal. I realize that what I'm doing is attracting certain people when they see me in TV and they hear my, remember, they come to me that they're karmically mature. So for me, it's a facilitative thing. They come in, they're open. I can read them very easily. You understand? It's like we're I brothers I understand. and sisters. I, just, I get it. I get it. I think that and, and we're, in, we're in such a powerful time that we now are opened to those ideas. I mean, you have a very successful holistic practice now in Puerto Rico, and you're helping your patients to heal. But what I love about your work is that you're incorporating meditation. Yes. And so you also incorporate meditation techniques into your holistic practice. So what would you say is the role of meditation in preventative and therapeutic medicine? Uh, I think it's, it's the most important part of the healing aspect. This is the reconnection of yourself with yourself, your inner self. When you reconnect with your inner self, you reconnect with everybody else. It's very important. It's the only way to really empathy and grow in consciousness is grow within yourself. When you open to yourself and you open up that beautiful, immense, sometimes I call the magical mirror that reflects outside, then you connect with everybody else's magical mirror or mind at the same time. And then it, everything flows better. You understand yourself. You see the good and the bad and the ugly. And like my teacher told me, everything is good, everything is right, nothing is out of place. He told me, look at the creation of the universe as a, as a illusion in the hands of a great magician. When you go see that illusion and you enjoy it, you enjoy it, you clap it. If you don't like it, well, just observe it. But it's an illusion. But one thing he told me, never believe that it's real. Never believe it's, it's just an illusion. That way you can flow through the universe, enjoy it, share it, show, share the good and share the suffering with people, but you don't get attached. So then you don't judge the suffering. You don't judge the good by karma. You don't judge the good dharma. It's there because it has to be. That's the school of life. The school of life in my books is the learning experience from your mistakes. When we learn from our mistakes, we become wiser beings. And we're connected with that ampleness of whatever you want to call the divinity of love, whatever religion calls it, because I believe all religions are connected to the same source. Uh, but that source, grows, apparently grows within our consciousness when we learn from our lessons. It seems to grow, but it's not growing. It seems to be evolved, but it's not evolving. We're discovering. Because what we do is discover the beautiful nature or the diamonds we all have hidden in our hearts. That's one of my phrases. <laughs> Love it. So, I so let's talk about your soon-to-be-released soon book titled Spirituality 104. You've been this, talking about this, magical mirrors and the lessons from the School of Life. Can I sh um, show you the, the, uh, the Spanish? I just want to show you. Yeah, show you so please. You see beautiful. Look at the beautiful, look at the like beautiful thinker. Wow. The thinker. Love it. It's a beautiful. Anyway, this arises because in my program, TV program, which I usually record once a week, it's called the Spanish Agujas Que Tejen Salud, Needles That Threat Health. Uh, 
I always had to start a program with a phrase from my book. So I would pick a phrase from my book and discuss it, and then people would love it. Oh, that's beautiful. We want those phrases. Why don't you make a book of it? I said, well, the universe is telling me make another book. So I piled a bunch of phrases, hundreds of phrases from my book. Then I picked 52. So you could have one per week. So you could study. If you want to do it that way, you can read more at the same time. And then I used these phrases. And then I discussed them in deep detail what the meaning was within the book. And it has become a beautiful book because it, it's like a review book for those who have read my previous book. And it's an incentive for those who have not read it to go back and read it. Uh, and it's pretty interesting because I discussed it very simply, what that means. I have so many phrases. Each has its own little way. Because that's uh, when, the spirit, when, when the spirit looks at the universe, when, when the being looks at the universe through the eyes of the spirit, all they see is love. That's one of the phrases. All you can see is love. But you have to look through the eyes of the spirit. And that means meditation, you were asking me. When you meditate, you tune in to that vibrational source, which is invisible. We don't see it. It's all around us. So we tune into that, whatever technique you use, which are, they're all good. By the way, all my patients come out with a meditation. That's, I give them assignments. The School of Life in my office says, okay, I give them a big book. Thing. This is your assignment, one, number three, number five. And the next time you come, I'm going to check up on that. I do that. I say, oh, this is a school of life. The meditation is one of the most important things that I'd be able to do because I use for Christians the concept of meditation with heart-based meditation techniques, but I use the figure of Jesus. So they're very comfortable in meditating. Of course, of course. They it's all about it. language. Yeah, yeah it's, about language. it's a matter of, of doing it their way. My so how does spirituality, me, how does spirituality... 104 differ from your previous tr trilogy of, of books. It's because of the quotes that are included in it more? Yes, because it's not really a, a book with continuity. You can read it, start from the beginning, pick a phrase. Your own intuition will go to the first phrase and then you pick one. And I'm going to, I like that. We'll start with that one. And I think that way intuition and karma will guide you to the one you need. That's the way I feel. And then it's written very simple language. It sounds Christian because I want to speak to Christians. You understand? Sometimes uh, being a Buddhist practitioner, uh, we tend the tendency to speak in Buddhist terms to Christians and they get fearful about that. And so I love the Buddha and I love my teacher and I love Jesus and I tell my patients that I learned to read the Bible a new way when I practice Buddhism. Buddhism awoke in my heart the concept of compassion and forgiveness that I could not do it by myself when I read the Bible. And then when I go back to the Bible, everything is there. It's like the Buddha said the same thing in a different language. Yeah, it's just that he, it's just that the Buddha, the Buddha, do. the Buddha came before Christ, remember? Yes, 5,000 years. Before Buddha was Abraham, and before Abraham yes. was the deities. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, Spirituality yes. 104, as you're saying, Dr. Ivan, is very relatable um, to life lessons. It's, like, it gives folks a chance to learn a lot. What are some life lessons that you've learned? Um, one, in, one in particular. I think, let's see, so many lessons. What I've learned is to never, never assume that you reached, you said at the beginning, yeah, you reached your goal of spirituality. Never do that. That's a mistake. Uh, it's a never-ending story. And when you think you're done, there'll be a challenge to prove yourself. There'll be challenges. I've been challenged in the last, you know, that for the last two or three years, very severely. I'm challenged in all what the ways I love and things have been, in well, many ways, many ways. And then you have to realize that it never stops. You have to keep going by opening up instead of 
closing yourself. I'm done. So when you meditate, you meditate to keep growing and knowing those more new aspects of the beauty of the deity and that universal wisdom, whatever we want to call it, God, Allah, whatever. But that universal wisdom is immense. You can only taste it a little bit, enjoy it, and then you feel, oh, you're in a trip. You're in a trip. You don't need the medication. You don't need the drugs. When you taste this, this really is joyful. I've been through those trips. I was talking to a guy who did ayahuasca once in South America. I was going to Machu Picchu, and he told me that. And then I started describing what I had. I said, what? That's a trip of ayahuasca. No, no, no. That was a trip in my heart. I just opened up. And I had it, and I had beautiful experiences that you go into, and they're simple, but they really teach you so much, and they last you forever. When you connect to a source, when you have a beautiful divine experience that you had many times, you never forget that. When in my hard times I feel sad, I just close my eyes and go back to that moment where I had experience with my teacher, I had experience with a patient, that healing patient, when I had experience mm -hmm. with my own wife things when we met and then you go to the little moments in life fill your Beautiful. heart and then everything falls into a pattern like i said before there's nothing wrong and there's nothing perfect there just is i know that you says is. i'm with you on that one being i'm with you on that one Dr. Being. Being. that's um, all you have to be so i learned to from... be more patient i learned not <laughs> to be self-centered good so from one of the things I'm picking up about you in life right now, you're very grateful. And many people talk about the importance of gratitude. Could you share a little bit about what you're grateful for? That divine intelligence manifesting itself in people like you, in people like my teacher, in people like my family, all my family members to recognize that divinity that every one of my family members have manifested in me, my friends, the good and the bad, these things fulfill me and they help me go forward. All the little steps on the little rosary of life, the rosary of life are important. Mom, my strongly directed mom, my father, all these people I am so happy about having met them. I fall into my karmic space and I enjoy it now and I review my movie. I don't see it like a bad story. I see it like I told you, I'm joyful and grateful, especially when I meet people like you who share my views and, and tell me, you know, guide me a little bit more because you helped me many times and you show me the way and give me some light into my own process. You, you're very intuitive, I know that. And then my own teacher in Tibetan Buddhism, which I have to, I, ha I have to be joyful. When he looked at me for the first time, I saw a human being that could love me completely fully without judgment with his eyes. And that experience, I can, I can never describe it. It's to be completely, it's like radiant. I am perfect. I am ready. I'm the way I should be. And he looks at you and the other little tiny smile or like a little kid and he smiles at you and that's all I he needed to be happy. Then I found my own path. <laughs> it's like he shines, I shine, we shine. Isn't it amazing how it's the little things that we are really grateful for? I mean, a smile, a moment in time, a memory. And I wish we could do that a little bit more. I've loved our time together, and before I go, when will your new book be released, and is there a place that we can go to purchase it? It will be released at the October the 1st, September 30 to October the 1st, and it will be out in most of the links, Amazon, oh, Amazon. the company who publishes is Mascot Books, which is a very good company, they adopted me, that's why it's called Mascot Books. <laughs> I think it's your once in a while. <laughs> I'm a little stray. That's no, you are absolutely right. perfect, man. Leave us with the website now. Did you mention the website? The best website folks can well, know more about you? Yeah, www, like my name, Ivan Figueroa Otero, MD, 
Ivan Figueroa Hotel and And that you'll find everything about me there. The good, the bad, and the ugly is there. Beautiful. Dr. Ivan, thank you so much. You're such a delight. It really is always nice to see your beautiful face, your radiant. And I admire you, the way you run around. You, I don't know how you do all the other you do. I, I have to breathe and take do some it. air. You know I'm using God's something. light to do it. You know that. You know I'm <sighs> using God's light. You know that. Yes, I know you do that, but I just can't, can't believe the way you do it. It's and just Papa's you. love. I'm trying to slow down my rhythm here now. Because I really am working hard, but I feel so joyful about working hard. It's uh, sometimes you complain. I have my hard times, and I have a good time. So let's do it. Go the roller coaster. I'm in the hot part of the roller coaster. Let's enjoy it <laughs> before it goes down. Okay. The other again, we'll start again. I will be back. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. Om Thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Well, everyone, we've gotten some really nice tools from Dr. Ivan, and I really highly recommend that you go search him out and get a copy of his book as well. This is a really well-meaningful physician. And with physicians being so much under duress right now, they might be looking for shortcuts, but not for Dr. Ivan. He's looking for the complete holistic approach towards our health and well-being, inside and out. Inside and out. I'm looking for what they want what they need and they deserve those three okay. components what thank they you want, for sharing they need, that and it's okay thank you so much for sharing that all right so remember no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission and i suspect we really are here to love each other the same just a little bit more so take care of yourself and be well om shanti